Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. If you saw your corn looking just a little bit yellow this year, what was your first assumption? Maybe I'm short of nitrogen. But if that yellowing is up towards the top of the plant or a general yellowing across the whole plant, it very well could be sulfur. We want to talk about sulfur today and its importance in all crops. Well, one of the ways you can identify that you're going to have a sulfur issue in the crop is if you properly use soil test information. So we want to talk today about getting a soil test and then reading that soil test for your benefit going forward. Get one of the toughest to control weeds as our weed of the week this week. And it's going to be fun chatting about this one. We'll show you what it is later in the show. But first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we want to talk a little bit about grain carts. What right. is a grain cart? All right, well, first of all, when you look at a farmer that's out in his field harvesting, what do you see? Well, you probably see a combine, yep. you probably see a truck, yep. but how does the grain go from the combine to the truck? Well, Darren, it can go guys, right away from the combine into the yeah, truck. Yeah, some guys will drive all the way back across the field and bring, bring that grain with the combine back to the truck. But you think about that, all that wasted time all the extra trips you're driving across the field packing things down, what if you had another thing, another machine that could come right along the combine? We do have that sort of machine. It's called a grain cart. My favorite job on the farm over all the years is actually running the grain cart. Now, personally, it's probably one of the easiest jobs, so maybe that's why I liked it so much. But all I can tell you is this. If you say, well, boy, that just seems like a lot of added expense. You're going to spend thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 or more on a grain cart. Why would a farmer do that? Well, here's the way it looked to me when I was running the cart. We would have two combines out in the field, and if we weren't running that grain cart to keep up with those two combines, we had to really slow down. We couldn't do near as many acres in a day. When we were running two combines and one grain cart, it was just like having three combines in the field. You could keep those combines rolling. They never had to stop. The only bad thing, Darren, is I remember when I first started running the grain cart, and our dad said, I don't know if I like the grain cart because now I don't get a break. I have to keep going all day long running the combine. So anyway, well, it know, is we, nice. We talk a lot on our show about we want to find $100 an hour jobs on the farm. And certainly running a combine is a $100 yep. an hour job. And if we can keep that combine running all the time, absolutely, that's how you make money. That's how you get things done. And farmers are in a big hurry in the fall because the weather is going to change and things are going to happen. And when crop is dried and ready to harvest, you need to get out there because all of a sudden that stock isn't quite as strong as it used to be and you're holding a big ear of corn or lots of pods of soybeans. Yeah, so the whole thing is you've got a very expensive machine, a three hundred to five hundred thousand dollar combine that's running out in the field by using a $50,000 grain cart with a tractor on it, and every farmer's got the tractor sitting there anyway, you can use a less expensive machine to keep the more expensive machine running more hours. That absolutely pays. Well, grain carts are something that many farmers utilize to make their farms more efficient. One thing that farmers will do to make their fields more profitable is stopping weeds from robbing their yield. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. As weed resistance becomes more of a problem across the country, your crop protection program needs to stay flexible to be effective. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies wide selection of spray tips and nozzle configurations are available to keep your crop protection program right on technology, right on target. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. 
So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Oh, Ed, what are we presenting? That Credenz soybeans are designed using smart genetics. Look, state-of-the-art breeding advances the best germplasm. Plus, tailored varieties for any field conditions with choice in herbicide-tolerant traits. And Credenz soybeans come back by Bayer's ongoing innovation. Want increased yields and in ROI? Plant the smarter soybean. Talk to an authorized Credenz retailer or discover the right Credenz variety at credenz.bear.us. Always read and follow label instructions. Uh, we have a school and a church nearby. I actually go to the classroom to educate the students about what's going on here on my farm. The system that I have, I tie everything together. No-till, cover crops. We applied AgriLiquid in furrow with our soybeans this year. It seemed like they jumped out of the soil, even though we had the record rainfall. I really feel that I'm feeding my plant on a consistent year-round basis throughout the growing season. Compaction created during planting leaves thousands of dollars of potential yield in your fields. Copperhead Ag has developed the Furrow Cruiser Spiked Closing Wheel to close the seed trench more effectively. With a unique combination of closing power and control, the Furrow Cruiser provides earlier, more even emergence and higher stand counts, returning yield potential and putting profit back in your pocket. For more information on why you should never run a traditional closing system again, visit copperheadag.com. Our number one objective here at Ag PhD is to give you more information so you don't have to rely on someone else to do jobs for you on your farm. You can do them yourself. We talk about $100 an hour jobs. We want you to be able to do the $100 an hour jobs. And I'll tell you about a job that pays at least $100, if not even $1,000 an hour. That's doing your own soil sampling and knowing how to read that soil test so you can make your own fertilizer recommendations. We'll show you how to easily do that on your farm today. A tool we've developed to help you with soil sampling yourself is the Ag PhD Soil Test app. You can download it for free for your smartphone or your tablet and use it out in your fields. It's real simple to use. You can go right in on agphdsoiltest.com and find each one of your fields. You can pull up the FSA maps, they already have your fields bordered. You can just click on it like that. Or if you say, you know what, I'm really going to farm that as two different fields, you can draw your own borders out in your field as well to, to set up which areas you want to soil test. Then using the app, you can very easily set up grids across your farm of varying sizes, whatever size is going to be right for you, so you can set up exactly where you're going to pull those soil tests when you get to the field. The great thing about having the app on your smartphone or your tablet for that matter, is you can use the GPS that goes through your phone or your tablet to go exactly to the spot you need to going all across the field. And it allows repeatability, so you can go back to the same spots in future years. That's a really big thing, because one of the biggest problems we see in soil testing is people don't get representative samples. They sample in one area of the field one year, another area the next year, another area the third year, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, they're trying to compare apples and oranges. That's just not right. We want to go back to the same spots year after year and find out, hey, what are we doing to the soil? Is it improving or are we making things worse? So when you get to your fields, it's real simple. The point is going to light up on your smartphone or your tablet. You drive right to it. It'll put a circle right around that point. You stop and get out and pull the sample. Now it's real simple if you're going to do like a six inch sample to, to pull a couple of cores in front of your truck or four wheeler, a couple to one side, a couple behind and a couple on the other side. That's going to make up as much soil as you're going to need if you're pulling six inch cores. Then just make sure you take your soil probe and you're always pulling the exact same depth and your probe is straight up and down. You'll get an excellent quality sample, like Brian said, that's repeatable as well. Once you collect those eight soil cores, you throw them in the bag. You don't have to do a bunch of mixing. The lab will do that for you. And then you're going to submit your samples to Midwest Labs. That's the largest lab in the country. That's why we work with them. Once the results come back, and it's usually in just a few days, then the easiest way to look at them, and certainly you can do it on your smartphone or tablet, but what I find is the easiest way to look at the information is on agphdsoiltest.com on your desktop computer at your house. It's really nice because you can look at as a map, you can look at individual nutrients, 
it tells you so quickly and easily what's going on in your field, that's awesome. You also will get Midwest Labs recommendations and our recommendations, so you have lots of information to work with there. In addition to that, you can make your own variable rate fertilizer maps with just individual nutrients or multiple nutrients. Lots of things you can do with the Ag PhD soil test app. With all this functionality, you may think, oh wow, it's gonna cost me a whole bunch of money. You're really only spending about what you're spending on the soil test. That, it's the same price as a, a soil test for Midwest Labs and you get all this functionality, the controller files, the ability to do your own variable rate maps. It's a really interesting and neat and effective tool that you can use on your farm and something that we're using on every one of our fields at home too. The most important thing is we want you to have good data. When you have good data and know how to read that soil test, you can make your own fertilizer recommendations and cut your costs on your farm if they're costs. But on the other hand, if there are certain fertilizers that will make you money and you've identified those, those are great investments. You want to put more into those types of things. So just getting smarter about soils, that's what the Ag PhD Soil Test is all about. And speaking of smart, you have to be smart to stop our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Ever wonder if you are over drying or spoiling your grain when you turn on the fans? Do you worry about the condition of your grain all winter long? Are you able to see what is happening in your bins? AgriDry will give you peace of mind with our 24-hour monitoring system. View real-time grain bin data online from a web-enabled device. AD Link will send you alerts when sensors are triggered by potential grain problems. Stop worrying and start storing quality grain with AgriDry. Visit agridryllc.com today. We farm mostly soybeans, uh, probably a third of it is corn. Uh, we switched to the Liberty Link trait about five years ago. We've had real good success with it. Uh, it's helped us control our weeds. Our biggest weed challenge would be the uh, pigweed. And we get our fields clean when we start. And then we usually try to come back 28 to 30 days after planting with our Liberty and a post emerge. And the Liberty is just easier and we don't have to be a chemist to mix our chemical. Very simple and it works. It's all done real well and we're just very happy with the Liberty Link system. The Liberty Link system, a simply better solution. Now backed by the Liberty Weed Control Guarantee because Liberty is simply better weed control by Bayer. I trust Agro Liquid because I've seen the results and they're positive and they work on my farm, they work in my environment. When I started farming, we was farming around 125 acres and now we're up to around 1,700 acres. I think I was recognized as the Tennessee Young Farmer by being a leader in the community and also being innovative. I'm always looking for new products, but I got to make sure that those products are sustainable. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old and I would love for them to farm this land. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. What's the most important nutrient on your farm? Well, most people are going to say N, P, and K, but you know what? In many cases, sulfur, we find, is a big limiting factor on farms across the country today, and sulfur is readily available. It's pretty inexpensive. We want to talk about that today. How much do you actually need? How much can it help your farm? Well, the real key here to finding out if sulfur is that nutrient that could give you a really strong return on your investment is to do a good job soil sampling, as we just mentioned with the Ag PhD soil test app. With sulfur, though, here's something to keep in mind. It is one that can move around in the soil. Much like we think about nitrate nitrogen, sulfur is one of those nutrients that if you get heavy rainfall and you have lighter soils and lower organic matter levels, it can move a little deeper in the soil. So if you're doing some deeper soil samples for nitrate, this would be a good time to look at your sulfur levels as well. And when Darren says sulfur levels, what we're talking about, just like with nitrogen, well, not all nitrogen leaches. You've got ammonium nitrogen that doesn't, nitrate nitrogen that does. 
Well, in this particular case, elemental sulfur, in a lot of cases, that's not going anywhere, but sulfate is. So you got to take a look at what you're applying for sulfur and how that is going to move a little bit. One point of confusion for many farmers is that, well, sulfur is really important for corn, but not as important for other crops. That's the wrong way to look at it. Sulfur is a required element for all crops. So take a look at the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app, type in your crop and your yield goal, and you can see what level of sulfur your crop is going to need. So it's important not only for the grain, but for the stover portion of your crop too. So your crop is going to pull quite a bit of sulfur out of the ground, and it is going to use some of it in the manufacturing of the grain. Yeah, just to give you an idea here, I just pulled up the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app on my smartphone. 60 bushel soybeans need 21 pounds of sulfur. Well, that's a big deal. And yes, corn, if I plug in 200 bushels of corn, that needs 30 pounds of sulfur. So it does take a little bit more with corn, but soybeans still need a lot of pounds. It's not a quarter of a pound, it's not a half a pound, it's 21 pounds for 60 bushel soybeans. So you've gotta have a lot of sulfur in that soil. All right, so we mentioned that sulfur can move around in the soil a little bit and that your crop does need some sulfur. So when is the time to apply it and how do we do that? Well, there are many different types of sulfur that are out there. There's ammonium sulfate, for example. There's ammonium thiosulfate. There's even elemental sulfur. So the timing of the year that you're going to apply is going to make a big difference on which product you select and also what your other nutrient needs are. For example, with ammonium sulfate, many farmers will say, well, I need that ammonium form of nitrogen. That's very stable. I like that. Uh, and I can also meet some of my sulfur needs by doing it at the same time. When we talk about elemental sulfur, the additional benefit with elemental sulfur is it can lower soil pH. So we've taken soil pHs of over 8 and brought them down to under 7 with one application of elemental sulfur. It absolutely can be done. It might take quite a bit. It might be a little bit cost prohibitive, but the point is elemental sulfur absolutely can lower soil pH. So a sulfur, you may apply it several times during the year, much like we're managing nitrogen. In fact, for corn farmers, uh, many corn farmers will put sulfur with their nitrogen, and as they're spoon feeding nitrogen out there, spoon feed the sulfur the same way and at the same time. In most cases, what we would like to see in terms of sulfur in the soil test is 20 to 80 parts per million, somewhere in that range. It's a wide range, I know, but the big thing is that you're not having sulfur deficiencies out in the field. Now, if you start to see some yellow spots in your corn or any crop that you're raising, do some plant tissue analysis. Sometimes you can mistake, hey, I think it's a zinc deficiency. Nope, it's a sulfur deficiency. You're gonna see yellowing on the top leaves on the plant, and that's where you say, Say, oh, hey, that's probably a micronutrient or sulfur, but just do some plant tissue analysis to make sure you know what you've got. Having good sulfur levels is important for crop production, but unfortunately, when you raise your sulfur levels, oftentimes you have more weeds. So we'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Weed of the week is field bindweed. Well, the first thing you need to know about field bindweed is it's a perennial weed and it's a primary noxious weed in many areas too, which means it's one of those things that if you say, ah, I don't necessarily want to control it, your county or your state may tell you, you know what, you need to control it or we're going to control it and charge you for it. All right, so we've identified, hey, field bindweed is an important weed we have to get under control. How are we going to do this? Well, let's talk first about what you don't want to do. In my opinion, you don't want to go do a whole bunch of tillage. What you'll end up doing a lot of times is spreading field bindweed around the field. So if at all possible, you want to avoid tillage where you've got field bindweed. Now let's say you just have a few patches and you need to till the rest of the field. That's fine, go till the rest of the field, but just lift up your tillage equipment over the top of that patch and then we can control that later with a herbicide. You'll do a much better job with the herbicide than you will tillage in terms of controlling field bindweed. 
All right, then when we talk about that herbicide, many times farmers are trying to use Roundup in non-crop areas, and Roundup is not highly effective on field bindweed. And we just said we've got a perennial, we've got rhizomes under the ground. What? Roundup's not gonna get it 100%? No, in many cases you look at two quarts of Roundup and, and you just don't get it under control. So what can you do? What can actually translocate into the root system and control field bindweed? Well, a better choice, believe it or not, is dicamba. The new Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans offer us a chance to spray dicamba in crop, in soybeans, and get down into that root system and do a nice job on field binding. Yeah, a nice job, but here's the problem. If you're just gonna talk one pint of clarity, is that gonna permanently eliminate that field bindweed patch? No way. Now, if you could go a quart in advance of planting or maybe after harvest, then yeah, that might do it. But otherwise, we just get real concerned about how much dicamba are you gonna use? And for that matter, you know what, 2,4-D is pretty similar to dicamba. How good is that gonna be? Neither one of those, in my opinion, is a real great way to go unless we're talking really, really super big rates. Personally, I like controlling this field bindweed with Tordon out in a pasture. Otherwise, uh, I like distinct or status in corn. I think that's gonna be a better option for you. Yes, in soybeans, now that we have this new dicamba trait, you can use dicamba, that's gonna be okay. If you wanna use Roundup, just keep your water volume low, keep your droplets small, because it's difficult to get a lot of glyphosate onto and into that field bindweed plant. And like Darren said, it's not highly effective anyway. The other thing is with Liberty, we get a lot of questions about, what do you think about Liberty controlling field bindweed? Hey, it's better than the conventional soybean options that we've got, and you can go ahead with Liberty and at least fry off some of the top growth but that root system is still going to be intact. So you have to keep that in mind when you're trying to manage field bindweed. The good thing is we rarely have major problems with field bindweed out in cropland. It's usually in non-crop areas. And again, if you're running high rates, very high rates of dicamba or 2,4-D, that's pretty good. Otherwise, personally, I like Tordon a lot better where that can be used. All right, how about wheat? Uh, in terms of wheat, I'd start with Sharpen. I'd follow post-emerge with uh, probably wide match and addition broad spec, but again, you're not gonna have great control there. You will hold it down. Unfortunately, you got a good thick canopy with wheat, so usually field bindweed isn't a major issue there. That's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week field bindweed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. I would recommend Morton for many reasons, but one is that they have a long history of standing behind their buildings. Our sales experience with Morton was a nice experience. You know, they told us what it was going to cost, what it was going to be, you know, how it was going to run, and uh, it worked out really well for us. Morton has built me one heck of a nice building, and it should stand for a very, very long time. I was very happy with the workmanship. Check us out online at mortonbuildings.com. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. There are no marks of conflict lining this landscape. No echoes of economic hardship. Just the unmistakable murmur of Mother Nature's hand. In the perennial quest to outperform, ensure your crop gets the nutrients it craves with a Vail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Nothing helps protect your investment more so you can grow confidently no matter what comes your way. A Vail. Hold your ground. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. The ease of use on the Spartan is pretty simple. I can hook this up in five minutes, 
anybody that runs a chopper that chops any sort of sorghum, cane silage, anything like that, anything that is tough that ever goes down, Spartan is the best thing that we have found and we've been looking for something like this for over 15 years and it blew me away. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. There are trillions of hard-working microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. With new seed traits and chemistries entering the market, your crop protection equipment needs precision and adaptability. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies has the products to give your applications greater accuracy, less drift, and more coverage. Hypro, right on technology, right on target. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Dry corn in the field leads to an increase in shatter loss. We'll talk about how to deal with that problem in today's Iron Talk. Whether you're right in the middle of harvest or already done, the best time of year to brainstorm equipment fixes is right now. Fortunately, the best time to purchase parts is coming up too, as many dealers have sales on parts during the winter months. With shatter loss during corn harvesting, there are a couple obvious points to make. First, harvesting at 18-20% to 20 moisture greatly reduces harvest loss. In an ideal world, that's when we'd harvest everything to maximize yield and minimize problems. Secondly, Every kernel that doesn't make it into a combine is a potential volunteer corn plant in your field for next growing season. The weed competition costs you yield. The weeds themselves, volunteer corn, cost you money to control. If you're continually running into problems with grain getting too dry in the field before harvest, there are different fixes available for nearly every kind of harvesting machine. The first step would be to speak with your equipment dealer for upgrades or modifications you can make to your specific brand of harvesting equipment. Secondly, there are aftermarket fixes advertising up to an 80% reduction in shatter loss at the header. If you don't think you can afford to fix things, stop and consider the economic loss that you're seeing in the field. Just two kernels of corn per square foot equates to about one bushel of yield loss. If you're losing three bushels per acre on 1,000 acres, that's about a $10,000 loss. And that doesn't even include the expense of controlling that volunteer corn next year. Shatter loss is a serious problem in corn, especially when corn gets too dry. Do some harvest loss counts on your farm and look into the fixes to put this lost income back into your pocket. That's all time for today's Iron Talk, but now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. Well, that's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us on Sirius XM channel 147, that's the rural radio channel, each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Crop residues from previous crops are highly beneficial to our soils and the environment. 
As residues break down naturally in the soil, they release nutrients for future crops but can also become organic matter in the soil, providing nutrient and water holding capacity and a home for soil microbes. Visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org to learn how farmers manage crop residues.